Hi, in this video I'm looking at using a graphics calculator to simulate sampling 40 numbers from a uniform distribution on the interval of 20 to 31 and drawing a graph. And then we're going to simulate 70 sample means, so finding the means of 70 samples where each of those samples have a size of 40 from that same interval and draw the graph of the sample distribution and then we're going to find the mean and standard deviation of that sta sampling distribution and we'll comment on what we find out. So to do this we're going to use a graphics calculator as it says. Um, I'm working with the Casio CG50 calculator and it has a random number function called ran hash, ran number. And it generates a number in the range from 0 up to 1, a random decimal from 0 to 1, not including 0 and 1. So if we want to generate an interval between 20 and 31, we have to somehow shift this to get 20 to 31. And so to do that, we have to expand out our range from 0 to 1 up to the range from 20 to 31. So I first got to have a look at the width of my interval. And so the interval that I want is going to be 31 minus 20. It's going to have a width of 11. So I've got to expand my random number from 0 to 1 to be from 0 to 11. And so what I'm going to do is multiply that random number by 11. And then I've got to shift that to start at 20. So I'm going to add on 20. So our actual overall number to get this is actually to get a number in the range from 20 to 31 I'm going to do 20, our smallest number and then add on my width of 11 and then multiplied by that random number between 0 and 1. So let's go and put this now into our graphic calculator and we want to do it 40 times. So when we go to our graphics calculator, I'm going to use the spreadsheeting function here. So that way we can get 40 times. And so let's go to the spreadsheet function. And down column A, I'm going to do our 40 numbers for our first sample. So we've got to type in our little rule that we've developed here. So I'm going to go shift equals to start up a rule. And we're going to type in our rule 20 plus 11 times by our random number. So to get our random number, I'm going to go to Options, Probability, then Rand, and we've got our different random numbers. We just want a random number. So if I press Execute now, I've got a random number, 29.912. So that's within our interval. And now I want to get that to be 40 times, so I'm going to fill this up from row 1 to row 40. So I've got to clip it, so we're going to go Shift 8 for clip. We're going to go to our Edit menu, go around with F6 to fill, and we want to fill our rule from A1 all the way up to A40, so that way we have our 80 numbers. Press Execute and Execute to save, and it generates our 40 numbers and if we exit out so that I'm no longer clipped and trying to copy, I can see that we're between 20 and 31 if I go down our numbers here. So now we want to graph this. So to graph it, I'm going to go around to our graphing menu and we're going to set up our graph. So I'm going to go to set. We're setting up graph one. We want it to be a histogram. Currently it's saying that we're going to be doing A1 to A50. We want it to do A1 to A40 because we only have 40 samples. So we're going to execute to save and execute again. And so now we can do graph 1. It wants to know what our lowest number is, which is 20, and what we're going to set our width for our intervals to be. At the moment, 0 0.2, that sounds reasonable. We've got decimal numbers in our ranges, so we'll keep it within decimals. And we'll graph that, and we'll get this histogram here, which we can see that there's a few numbers that are missing, but overall we can see a uniform distribution of a rectangle being formed here. If I exit out and try to regraph that, and we'll graph it with a smaller width, 
So we'll go up to a width of 0 0.5 and see if that improves our graph a little bit. So now we can see that we've got our graph being a little bit more rectangular. We've got less bars now because we've increased the width of each of those bars. We've still got some gaps. I would imagine that if I try again with the width of 1, I would get rid of those gaps. And we mostly have. But overall, we can see that our numbers are within this range and uniformly distributed across it. We haven't got any sort of curving or massive spikes anywhere. So that's our uniform distribution there. So now we've got our single sample of 40 numbers. Let's have a look at simulating 70 samples and getting their means and having a look at what that graph looks like. So to create one sample, we're going to need to create up a new rule. So we're going to go shift equals, and we're still going to one hour 20 plus 11 times a random number, but this time we want a random number list. So that way we have a list of 40 numbers. So we're going to use list this time rather than a random number. We're going to get our random list, which just generates a list of whatever number you put in here of numbers between 0 and 1. So that's going to give us a list between 20 and 31 with 40 numbers in it. But we want the mean of all of that. So we're going to go to options list and go around till we find sum. So that way we can sum up all of this and divide by how many we have in that list, which is 40. Press execute and we get one sample of 40 items and we found the mean of it. And so now we want to do this 70 times. So we're going to shift clip. We're going to go to edit and round to fill and we're going to fill this all the way up to be 70, so that way we have 70 samples. Press execute a couple of times, and it will generate 70 sample means of numbers uniformly distributed between 20 and 31. So now we have our 70 samples. We can exit out, and we can have a quick look down this list and see that they start about 24, and they go up till somewhere like 26, 27, but it seems like our smallest number is 24. So let's go and make sure our graph is set up. So we'll set up for graph number two. And we want to make sure we have a histogram between B1 and B70. We want to make sure we go to 70 because that's where our data is. So exit out of our set, well, or execute our set, make sure it's saved. And we'll graph graph 2. Our distribution, we said, starts at 24. So we'll put in 24. And we'll try a width of 0 0.2 to see what it looks like. So we graph it. And we get that, which looks kind of like a uniform distribution. Let's have a look at what happens if we try a smaller width. So we'll try halving our width to 0 0.1. That gives us a graph that even looks even more like a uniform distribution because we can see it curving up to a max and curving down to a min. So that's our graph now. And so now we can do part C, which is to get the mean and standard deviation. And we have our one variable statistics available from our graph right here. So we can go F1 and get our one variable statistics and we can see that our samples gave us a sample mean of 25.47 and a sample distribution which is the SX to be 0 0.4645 so we can get using our data as our spreadsheet even some statistics from our sampling distribution so now we can do part D, which is to comment on the results. So even though our first graph, which we started from 20 and had a width of 1, gave us this, and let's capture that so we can put it up. And we can have a look at graph 2, which started at 24 and had widths of 0.1, which gives us 
this graph, even though our original distribution was uniform or approximately uniform, our overall distribution when we find the means of it actually approaches being a normal distribution. And when we calculate our statistics, we can see that we have a mean of 25.4, which is about halfway through this interval. And it's reasonably accurate because we have a standard deviation that's quite small of only 0.46. And so that's it. We're done.